Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are actually covering um, a quick 10 minute tutorial. This is going to be hash cap rules. I actually had this um, requested in the discord. So if you guys want to see videos that you want to see and things that you want me to try or do or review, go ahead and hop in the discord, join the community and, and let's chat about it and also put a video request in and I can actually make it. So this one actually, let me check who um, submitted it because this is a, uh, okay, AZA. So shout out to him. He requested this video. We're going to go ahead and do it. So quick 10 minute tutorial. What is Hashcat? Hashcat is a password cracking tool, right? So why do we need to make rules? Well, let's say we had something simple like a password and that's one of our passwords, right? And then we had, um, you know, crack me. That's another password, right? And then um, guess me, whatever. It doesn't really matter. There's the passwords, right? You have a list of them. You have like the rocku.txt and things like that. A lot of people have. Well, these lists, that's great, but they're words, right? Everyone knows that nowadays with password crackers and things like that, 90% um, of organizations, places, things like that require numbers, exclamation points, or special characters, at signs, that type of thing, um, and a complex password, right? So what do we do with it? Well, we take these and we make rules to them and we say, hey, okay, we want password one, two, three. We want you to try password, but we want you to try password one, two, three. We want you to try password where the O is a zero. We want you to try password where the A is an at sign, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? But here's the thing. I don't want to create a new word list that has all these passwords in it because the rocku.txt and the password lists out there and things like that are, are already extensive. So they're already huge files. So what do I do? With Hashcat, I can make rules and then I can determine if certain rules are better than others. And then with that rule, I can actually take it and I can say, okay, take all the words in this word list and do this to them and try it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just set up some, some custom rules. So first things first, just like regular, you can put a comment, right? This is our rules. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna say, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is just that. That colon, that just means, and if you look at any Hashcat documentation, um, I couldn't find their actual, well, I could find it, but I couldn't get it to load for some reason, the actual documentation, so I had to go to a different site to find the documentation. But if you look at the documentation, um, these are basic rule sets. It's how you use them. So what I mean by that is like, this is known as, let's go ahead and hit another one. The colon will run password as is. So what's that mean? That means if you put a colon in there, it's just gonna run the password exactly the way you the word list says it. So if the word list says password, that's what it's gonna try. It's gonna try just password and crack it, right? Now, the next one we're gonna do is lowercase. So we want lowercase. So if your password is, sorry, I got a call. If your password is, you know, password with like this, for instance, if your password is P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D with two capitals, but you don't think that that's gonna work, you think that they they might have all lowercase, try all lowercase, right? And then obviously the next one's pretty easy. You have uppercase and that's just a U. So then you have, okay, uppercase, so far pretty simple, right? You have uppercase, lowercase, you have cap capitalized, so you can do capitalize the first letter and that's just C, so that's gonna capitalize the first letter in the word. So basically you're gonna say, okay, I want password, but I want the P to be capital, so that way I know, you know, I'm trying, because most people capitalize the first letter, right? Now, here's where you get to the tricky part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, it's not tricky, but this is where you can kind of start substituting stuff. So if you wanna append something, meaning I wanna add it to the end, right? Like password one, two, three, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna try, whoops, I didn't mean to put the space. So we're gonna say add one to the end, and you just put a dollar sign one. That's gonna append it on the end, right? So then we can say, if we wanted to, add two to the end, right? And you can see where we're going with it. We could just add all of these, right? And it will go through and try and add them all to the end. That's pretty easy. Now let's say I wanted to add one, two, three to the end because this is what people commonly do, right? So now we just put them on one line. We say one, 
two, three, right? If we put them all in one line, it will add them to the end. So then all we have to do, and I'm only commenting these so you guys can see them to the end. Okay, and you make a whole list of word list rules, right? So, so far it seems pretty easy, but here's where you can kind of get tricky with it, if you will, right? So let's say you think that this person's an IT person, they might have some sort of knowledge, right? Um, now, you mind you, when you're cracking hashes, you wanna have the most extensive list, but also that adds more time. So the more creative you get and the smarter you be with it, for instance, if I already knew your password um, policy at your company, because I'm doing a pen test and I asked for it, it'll save a lot of time. I can make the word list that mimics your password policy and save tremendous amounts of cracking time, right? So for instance, we say, okay, substitute, let's say we want to substitute the A in password. So instead of password, we want password. That's our original word, right? Well, with the rules we have below or above, it's going to try that one. It's going to try this one. It's going to try, um, it's going to try this one. One, password two, two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to keep trying them and then it's going to try password one, two, three. Now it's going to do all this without me having to create a new um, word list. I don't have to go and get make a word list that says password, password one, password two, password one, two, three, blah, blah. I don't have to do that, right? It's going to try and capitalize. It's going to lowercase, blah, blah, blah. So what we can do, let's say we wanted to make a password that says P like capital P A S S W zero R D like that instead of the regular password, right? Well, instead of adding all this, like I said, creating a new word list entirely, we can add a rule. So mind you all, you'd have to delete these. You don't want to put the password in there, but what you're going to do is simple. You're going to say substitute. So S. So I want to substitute the A. Okay. The A in password. And it's gonna be in anything, so keep that in mind. And then I wanna substitute it for an at sign. So that's substitute A for at sign. That's a rule, right? So now it's gonna run P A, P at sign, S S. And then I wanna substitute on the same line, I wanna substitute the O for a zero. Whoops. Okay, and then there you go. It's gonna start, you're gonna start building rules like that. So looking for special characters. If I wanted to, a lot of people put exclamation points at the end of theirs. If I wanted to add an exclamation point to the end, it's a dollar sign exclamation point, right? Because I'm sub or I'm appending it, right? Sub or the dollar sign is an append, meaning it's adding it to the end. So you set up all these rules. You can set up all kinds of things. If I wanted to add characters, right? If I wanted to go ahead and say, okay, I wanna add whatever, right? So let's just say I wanted to add A at the beginning, okay? So this will add it at the beginning of it, okay? And then if I wanted to add it at the end, you just gotta append, just like normal. So this would be now, with that, it would be A, password, and then R, right? Because that's, a, you're adding it to the beginning and appending the end. So you can build these, these rules really, really advanced if you want to. So let's say I know your company's name is, for instance, we'll use Try Hack Me, right? Let's say we know your your company's name is Try Hack Me. So someone probably uses THM in their password, right? Well, we can easily say, okay, we wanna put a T at the beginning, we wanna put a H at the beginning, and we wanna put a M at the beginning. And then we wanna actually put a T at the end, we wanna put a H at the end and an M at the end, right? Now, this is gonna try just like this, THM password, it'll try that, and then it'll try password THM. So you can see you can add words in there too. So you can, and you can substitute them. You can do all kinds of things. So you can really get advanced with how you do this. Now the question is that I usually get a lot at this point is, okay, well that's great that I can build rules and you can go look at, um, like I said, Hashcat's entire rule dictionary of what you could do. But then let's say, how do I actually run this, right? Excuse me. Well, all you gotta do to run it is you just say hash cat, just like normal, right? And then you gotta say A for your attack method and zero. That's Okay, welcome back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, had a little hiccup there. So, okay, what we're gonna do now is a lot of people ask me, okay, so now how do we actually run the rules? We've created rules, right? 
Now, one thing I'll tell you is it's good to have multiple rule sets, meaning you might have a rule set for this type of engagement, you might have a rule set for a web app, you might have a rule set for SSH, you might have a rule set for different types of passwords. Why? Because some passwords require certain complexities and some don't. So you wanna have different rule sets. There's no point in us making a password list that's, or a password list and then a rule set that's gonna make this password list take 20 hours to crack when the password complexity is only set for eight characters with no capitals, no X or no uh, special characters, et cetera, et cetera, because that would waste a lot of your time. So make sure you make the rule sets for what you want to do um, and what your engagement is. So how do we run it? So you have hashcat A for attack mode, which zero is just the attack or the uh, word list with rules. And then M is what type of hash it is. And you can go on hashcat's um, website and they list every number for their um, hash. So whatever hash it is, you just match it up. And then you just say, okay, what, what's our word list? So a lot of people use the word list rock you dot text. Um, I'm not gonna actually do anything here. I'm just showing you guys. And then you say tack R for rules and wherever your rules are, ours are on the desktop. So we're gonna say desktop rules, okay? And then hopefully it keeps going. Um, and then we're just gonna say, okay, what's our actual hash we never i never put the hash in there because i'm not actually doing one but you can imagine so here would be um desktop and we'll say hash right and there's no actual hash here obviously but this would be the type of hash and then the hash and then the word list and then like i said the tack r for what rule set you're going to use now if you save multiple rules make sure you change the rules when you're doing that thing the other thing you can do here that's really nice and i recommend doing this especially as you get better is you can actually put in debug mode okay so um i don't know where my e went debug mode right and you want to turn on debug mode and then you can save it in a debug file um and you can say um, rule set debug, whatever. It doesn't matter what you name it, right? And the whole point of this is actually as you're going through, and then you can say force, that'll just force it to keep doing it. Um, basically, it will force it to go through even if it's not working or whatever. Um, but you don't have to do that. Anyway, the debug, what you do is this will actually tell you basically how successful each hash is in, or each um, password is and which rule set is actually working. So for instance, if it's going to run through those lists of rules, right? Well, if the first seven rules didn't give you anything on the hashes, but then the eighth rule actually cracked a few, like three or four hashes, you're going to see that in the debug file and you know, okay, that's a good rule. Let's keep that and put that in some of my other rule sets and things like that. So it's a really good tool set. If you don't have the time or don't want to, or you have a good rule set, don't worry about it. The other thing to keep in mind, if you don't want to create custom word lists or rule sets, excuse me, there are a lot of rule sets out there on the internet that you can use. I recommend creating your own for each engagement. The reason is obvious. Um, each engagement will be different on a pen test. Save yourself some time, ask for their password policy. If a company doesn't want to give it to you, that's fine. But you will save them and you a lot of time, effort, and money if you can just say, hey, just give me your password policy and I'll tailor my attacks to that because someone will figure it out anyway. It's just gonna take me time to figure it out without locking the accounts out and stuff like that. So um, just ask for it. It'll save you guys a lot of time. So hopefully this helps you guys with the Hashcat rules. If you guys want more in depth, this is just a 10 minute tutorial. We can do more in depth on creating custom rules. Um, and doing some more real world rules, but this is as creative as you want it to be. You can make it as insanely impressive as you want some of your rule sets or as simple as you want, just creating a rule set that says, hey, just capitalize the first letter. You can do whatever you want, but keep in mind, the more rules you have, the more passwords it's gonna guess and the longer your process this is gonna be. And it can be very, very long if you, um, depending on, you know, if you have a password list with a million passwords, and that usually takes two hours, let's just say, I'm just making numbers up here. Um, well, with all those rules, you've just added probably 10 times the amount, so now you're looking at 20 hours, right? So keep that in mind that it's gonna keep getting longer and longer um, to crack and harder to crack, um, but these are insanely good to use, and this is why a lot of people use Hashcat um, because of the rule set making. There are tools out there also that can make these word lists for you instead of where you can actually substitute and make the word list. But 
Again, then you have to store that word list. It's going to be really long and you got to make a new word list every single time for each engagement if you want. So hopefully this helps you guys. This was a little bit over 10 minutes, but hopefully it helps you guys and hopefully you guys learn something. Thanks.